Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another wonderful episode of That Sewing Blast. I'm so excited that you're all here with us. Now, those of you who are new to the show, I have to say that wonderful looking lady over there in the red, that is our host of the show, Dawn Pingali from the blog Dueling Design, and I'm her co-host, Myra Rentmeester from the blog Simple Inspirations. And that beautiful woman right there in the green, I suspect a few of you already know who she is, but we're gonna get to her later. So I just wanna get back to those folks who are new to our show. I just wanna explain a little bit of, of who we are. We are the community-based sewing hub for all things sewing. Here we share things like interviews, like the wonderful one we're gonna do tonight. We host events and challenges, basically anything related to sewing, we discuss right here. Now, if you have a question for us, we have an ask the question link down below. All you have to do is select that link, post your question, and we'll get to it before the end of the show. And I must, must say, please put your questions there rather than a comment section so we don't miss them. And if you like, you can also come on live and ask our guests a question live. You don't have to just put them in the comment section, you can come on live. Now, we know that our shows can be replayed both on Crowdcast and on YouTube, but we truly encourage you to join us live stream because there's just some things that you cannot do on a replay. Uh, some of the, what are those things you ask? Well, you can't vote on the polls, um, in the polls for some of the challenges that we have, or if we have um, a challenge where there's interviews or something like that, that we wanna ask you a question, you can't do that on a replay. Also, sometimes we're nice and we give gifts <laughs> to our live stream viewers. And if you're not here, you can't get a gift. So, and it's a lot of fun. So with that said, I'm gonna pass it on over to our host, our lovely Dawn, so she can get this show started for tonight and I can stop blabbing. Yeah. Are you ready, Dawn? <laughs> yeah, thanks Myra. Uh, good evening, everyone. Lorraine, Mary, Patsy, tons yeah. of people, even someone from Ottawa, just outside where I live. So fantastic that you guys have joined us. Tonight, we have someone I'm very excited that, to talk to and interview. Um, it's a bit different than our normal kind of interview. It, uh, it's not just a, a straight up sewing blogger or vlogger. Um, she is someone who works uh, more in the industry than some of our typical guests, which I think provides a really fresh perspective. So I'm very excited to talk with Betsy. She is a pattern maker, a technical designer. She does grading. She advises designers on starting up their lines. Um, yeah, she's just a businesswoman um, extraordinaire. And of course she sews. <laughs> so we're thrilled to have her come on tonight and tell us a bit about um, her uh, sewing pattern company. I, I want to make sure I get the letters right. S B C C, uh, skinny root, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and also her um, her business Garmenta. So uh, yes, remember if you want to know any of the links about things we're talking about tonight, if you check out in the description on YouTube or go up to the top and a little upside down exclamation mark, down will come the links for Betsy's um, um, website and also her patterns. So Betsy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're thrilled that you're here. Thanks so much for having me, yes. I'm excited. Ooh. Okay. No, oh, I thought you <laughs> were both raring to go. <laughs> I know, I'm like, yeah, come on. Okay. Um, we want to know a little bit about your kind of soaring sewing origin story. When did you start sewing? What, where did the spark come from? Were you, did someone influence you to start? Um, well, I have to say my mom and my grandmother, but I've been sewing since I was old enough to hold like one of those plastic crafting needles in my hand, you know, yeah. and, uh, like the, the kids cross stitch and stuff. And, uh, eventually kind of, um, made my way up to the, like, the little kid version of the sewing machines, little plastic things that are battery operated. Mm -hmm. And then maybe about seven years old, my mom let me try hers. So it was all, it all took off from that point. And did but, you know even back then that that was something you wanted to do? I don't know, maybe. I was always trying to design fancy frilly things and you know, put things together for my Barbie dolls, but what little girl doesn't? So. <laughs> true. <laughs> true, true. 
Now that we know a little bit about this, Swain, were you, um, now you probably had uh, some formal training along the way. Um, we're gonna touch on the design aspect, but I'm just referring to the sewing right now. Did you have any professional? Um, I mean, I learned some things in school, mm -hmm. but honestly, most of what I know I've learned on the job. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to work in the garment industry before most of like the domestic New York production went overseas. We still had sample rooms back then where we had professional sample makers uh -huh. that would stop and show me how to do things if I had a question. You know, like my first job, we had a room of like 15 people and which is practically unheard of these days. Wow. And all of the people were professional sewers. That's all they did all day long. And each one had their specialty and they were always so forthcoming about their knowledge. And any time that I had a question or, or did something wrong, even they'd be like, hey, this is how you're gonna do it. <laughs> this wow. is what I need to do to the pattern to make it work for me. And this is how I'm gonna sew it. So it was really like a process of trial and error throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Just learning from these people who've had a ton more experience than me. Well, it's so true too, because I've actually heard that before. I, uh, there was a neighbor of mine, she was French. Um, she was uh, older, but she used to work for a Christian drawer many years ago and she didn't have any education whatsoever but she loved to sew and she had taught herself how to sew and she ended up working for christian drawer and she learned a lot so it's similar to what you're saying you learned a lot from uh, the professionals when you went in the garment district so that's awesome i mean it's truly awesome it's almost like you're paying it forward now to you. Yeah. You said on your one of your websites that you had every crazy nerdy question you had, they answered. <laughs> well, it's kind of like um, they helped you out when you were beginning and you're doing the same thing now with your business garment, uh, helping out young designers. Um, can you maybe tell um, our viewers a little bit about that business? Yeah, I mean, to kind of expand on what you just said, like the fashion industry is very inclusive and not purposefully so, but everybody's like service providers like myself, like we're all really busy. It's hard to stop and like teach somebody necessarily unless they're right there next to you. And I know like a lot of startups have trouble working with um, with a lot of different pattern makers and creating services perhaps because they may, these startup designers may be thinking about things one way but the old time garmentos, I like to call them, like they're thinking about it in, like in the way that they know how. And it's hard to merge these two different visions together. Mm -hmm. And it, it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's an, an art in a way to try to dissect what somebody really wants to get to, their core idea. So I spend a lot of time asking questions and maybe even stupid questions to my, my clients. They're kind of like, why are you asking me this? Because I want to know everybody has a very different point of view. And I've never worked with any designer, even in the industry, who has thought the same way about any of the projects that they do. So everybody always has a different approach. And that's kind of how I, I like to tailor my business. You know, whatever your approach is, I'll go from your angle. Just answer my dumb questions along the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's going to be any dumb questions from you. Yeah, but <laughs> people think they're dumb questions, but they're not. Yeah. yeah is helping you get a better picture exactly. of who and what they are. And yeah. what services do you provide for those people who don't know? Because you actually offer quite a few services oh, through that, is. helping people out. Yeah, so um, my main role right now is I'm a pattern maker. So designers give me their sketches, they give me original garments, they give me um, measurements, and I make a, a template for them to make their first garment. And uh, either I'll have a sample maker sew it up, and or uh, they'll sew it up themselves. And once we go through the process of making sure that vision is achieved, then I go forward with the grading, which means making the different sizes. So like we start with the base size six and I'll grade all the different sizes from a six to maybe a zero all the way up to a 16. And it's just kind of a, it's a very mathematical incremental process. You know, it was never anything I ever pictured myself doing. <laughs> but I hated math. Now I do math all day long. <laughs> wow. But I do that, and then I make markers for mass production. Ma markers are how, um, like when you have an order for 10,000 garments, let's say, the mm -hmm. fabric is piled up in many, many, many layers, and you have a sheet of paper that has all of the pattern pieces and all the sizes carefully mm -hmm. placed on the paper to utilize all, every square inch of fabric possible. 
So I do that as well. Wow. Well, I, I, with all that Dawn just mentioned and had you to discuss with us, I just love the way you, um, when speaking about SBCC patterns, I love the way you described yourself on your uh, website. And if you don't mind, I'd like to read an excerpt of that for our viewers who may not have read that about you. Is that okay? Yeah, definitely, because I kind of forget now what I said. <laughs> <laughs> And this is what she says, and it's just an excerpt from there. It's an outlet for my own personal expression and OCD of making things. I am fit obsessed and have general preoccupation with perfectionism. I get a genuine thrill out of grading patterns and studying sizes for practical application. Now I have to say, <laughs> Betsy, wow. That truly <laughs> says everything right there about you and why you're so successful. Um, but I have to ask, has that, and I'm asking for selfish reasons, but has that perfectionism ever gotten you in trouble? Yes, yes, definitely. And I'm trying <laughs> to let go of certain things, you know? There's, there's a point where like, good enough is good enough. Otherwise you can make yourself crazy. There's no, there's no point of perfection ever. So yeah. I, I try and I try, I've tried to find my own ways of recognizing the road bumps along the way of each project that can keep me from getting closer to perfection. Oh my gosh, boy. Yeah. Well, thank you for that because you can't get us in trouble. No, <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Everything is never perfect. <laughs> it's true. But we try, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always good to strive for that. Absolutely but yeah. don't make yourself crazy in the process. Absolutely, oh my goodness, yes. Okay, Dawn, what? Uh, I, I, I was just gonna ask, I thought Myra was, um, I was gonna ask where do you find your inspirations when you're designing for your patterns for SBCC? Um, generally it's simple shapes that, that, are, that feel like they'd be satisfying to sew. And I, I mean, I have to admit, SBCC is a lot of selfish, sewing on my yeah. part. I deal with so many different designers and their ideas and how they want to do things. This is kind of like my outlet in a way to be like, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do exactly what I want to do the way I want to do it. <laughs> and this is what I want in my wardrobe, but <laughs> I'm, I'm working on that. I'm working to create more of a, like I'm reaching out to my customer base to try to find out what's missing from their wardrobes as well. So. Ah. Well, I have two questions based on what you were just saying. The first one just came to mind and I wrote it down over here. How did you come up with the name that we all know? <laughs> uh, you know, I wanted to make a name that that wasn't saying that, you know, to be a sewer, it has to be, the process has to be delicate or precious. You know, it's kind of straightforward. Like we make stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We accept our bodies for who, what they are, and we we have we work our shapes around that. So. So true, it is so true. But I, when I saw that, I looked. I went, "Did she really say that?" Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I started. I started SBCC at a time where people were trying to make like really safe names and safe patterns, and you know, it's all about not putting too much, you know, rocking the boat too much per se. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm all about that, you know. My I mean my <laughs> industry methods are different. Everybody else can be like, oh, I need to to do X, Y, and Z. I'm like, no, I'm gonna go straight to to W, X, Y, Z. <laughs> I'm gonna skip I'm gonna skip my these other steps along the way because I know how to do it. I'm just gonna get it quick and done. And I want people to have a successful project in the end. I think that's important though. Um, especially when you're talking to people like home sewers who might have, you know, um, learned on the go and yourself you went to school and then learned a lot on the job um it's definitely once you learn all the rules it's easier to know which ones you can break and you can break them whereas you know if, if it's your first time designing a pattern you're like yeah I'm just gonna go from a to b and, and skip it it might not but since you're so technical you probably have that in your mind what you can what not shortcuts but veering from the norm you can do that quite a bit easier with your experience yeah. i imagine all those years definitely you know 
every little job you've had has helped you c c get to where you are today. Yeah, totally. No, I do a lot of, I, I break a lot of rules and I'm not going to even go there and tell you guys what I break. <laughs> <laughs> the sewing community will be horrified. <laughs> That's no. okay. Keep breaking those rules because you have great <laughs> service. Yeah, yeah. I use myself as a foot model, but I have pretty good control over the measurements and how to maintain a standard. Like I know if I gain or, or lose weight, how to keep my sizing consistent across the, across the board and you know, yeah, with my plus sizes as well, my plus size. Well, I have to tell you, I was looking at um, uh, some of your patterns and looking at the way you actually, and I, I think I have a question down here later about that, but I was looking at the way your sizing was and your measurements, and I'm, I don't consider myself petite, but I am short-waisted, so I can wear petites. Mm -hmm. But when I was looking at your sizing, I used normally wear medium and small, medium, large range. And that looking at your measurements, they were almost right on point for me at medium. And I don't consider myself a petite person, but they were right on target for me. So yeah. I'm really interested to make up one of those to see how that works out. <laughs> sure. Well, petite isn't isn't like petite is a very broad category. You know, it's in, mm -hmm. it's not just about being short in general. It's like what you say, you can be short waisted mm -hmm. or or you know, um sorry, I lost my train of thought there. But it's, uh, yeah, I try to keep my, my numbers stand closer to like what I would do for ready to wear. Okay. You know, the, my ready to wear clients. Because I, I know that like that was a challenge when I first started sewing with big four patterns, for instance. Like, how can I be as a size zero and ready to wear? Like, how am I a size 10 or 12? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. it's off the top of my head from what I remember, but. Yeah, I keep I try to keep it aligned to something you'd buy off the racks. Okay. And um, yeah. petite body measurements, you know, they could be some some companies make them the width smaller than like a, a standard misses missy size, mm -hmm. but I try to do like a halfway point and make it a little bit smaller than standard missy size so everybody could still fit in. So it's a little wow. bit smaller width wise, but definitely shorter. <laughs> wow, well, you're doing a great job on it, and um, your gar your garmenta. Um, is a really, really nice service. Um, other than fashion schools uh, where you physically have to be there, for those aspiring designers, I'd have to say, um, you, they really get essential help from you. It's a push that they need. And I really don't know if I've seen anything out there like the service that you share here for people who these aspiring designers really need. Is there something out there similar to what you're doing? Yeah, there's actually quite a few people out there, but it's it's once again it's the time dedication to that. A lot of services okay. just you know we're busy making things. So we yeah. have to keep on keep on with the social media, keep on with the blog posts. You know, pretty relevant. I mean, most of my business actually mm -hmm. comes through referrals, so it's it's hard because you know like. I mean, SEO and all of that good stuff. You have to hope that people find you online. And it, it's True. difficult for service providers. So, but you know, yeah, there's people out there and everybody has a different approach as well. It's just something you got to kind of dig for. Yeah. Oh, okay. I can honestly say um, that's how I found you to interview as well that you have a uh, very good word of mouth um, yep. from uh, someone in the sewing world that most people would know like um i think your reputation is very stellar and uh yeah i'm excited to work with you myself um i'm not a big fan of grading i know how to do it but um i would not say i'm an expert at it by any span of the imagination so i'm yeah just meeting betsy was well even through email was like whoa very <laughs> really and I, I think you must be like that for more, a lot of people <laughs> they come in they yeah. have a problem and you basically are the solution so that's fabulous yeah. that they could they could find you like that but one thing i'm dying to talk about with you and i mentioned this uh to betsy in the <laughs> in the test is when we we're talking we were talking about petite and where there's also plus sizes yes. and um it's kind of a hot button topic in um the sewing world because uh you know do some companies provide plus sizes or not and what does that mean um i wanted to discuss grading specifically and grading for larger sizes because um i think some people might think that like for example if you have the square it would just exponentially get larger on all four corners and that's how you would grade i was hoping maybe you can 
tell us what the problem, like why it isn't that way and what kind of issues there are with plus size grading? Well, I mean, not to group everybody in one single box, but um, uh, plus sizes tend to have different concerns rather than oh. uh, the standard misses size. Like let's say plus sizes have a bigger chest. Well, that means your shoulders are gonna be maybe a little bit narrower and round and a little bit more. So your arm holes have to accommodate that. Your shoulders don't need to keep getting wider because yeah. shoulders are structural. You don't get bigger in your shoulders necessarily as you get wider, maybe in the waist and chest. So there's that to keep in mind. And you know, a lot of a lot of uh, curvy curvy plus sizes they have more weight in the hips. So that shape has to change as well. Like I can't keep I need to give those sizes a little bit more width. It's it what happens is uh usually around like size sixteen, I like to break off and start a brand new pattern for plus sizes and kind of redraft the shape into something that's a little bit more plus size friendly, have deeper bust starts, um, a little bit more front length, and like I said, the, the wider hips and narrower shoulders. And then I'll proceed to make to grade um, from that point on for just a whole plus size range. And then the Mrs. Size range will have its own. Wow, I wish I had knew half the things you do about body shapes, like just even listen to you, you talk. I mean, I mean, I guess it's kind of obvious if you kept making, like we were talking about this shape, wider and wider, um, the shoulder would. It would get so wide it would be halfway down your arm. But when you're talking about the slope of the shoulders possibly, yeah. and and even like when you're talking about petite, that not just making a shorter pattern, having it shorter in certain places. I mean, you must really understand the different sh sizes of women's bodies very well. And, oh, I wish I had half that in here. <laughs> well, but, um, Oh, sorry. Years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you could tell the experience that you have. No, but I uh, ask my, sorry, I try to ask my clients too. I'm like, well, who's your target customer? Like I need to get a picture of this one in my head because let's say like a plus size 20 year old is not going to have the same body as a plus size 50 year old. True. So even those shapes have to be taken into consideration. Uh, wow. Look at that. I, didn't knowledge. Think of that. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, so you're not, and you say this on your Garmenta blog, you're not trying to discourage pattern, like someone who comes to you and says, will you make a pattern for me? Or will you create a, a pattern line for me? And I'll do, you know, you're not trying to discourage them from having plus sizes. You, you, you fully embrace plus sizes. You think they're awesome, but you just want people to recognize that there are different issues. Yes. Um, it costs more. And um, another thing you mentioned is you have to make sure you have the market. So you could go to spend more to make the plus sizes, be really inclusive. And then, like you said, if your target market isn't, I mean, if they're not there, then you might've spent extra money that you won't get back. Exactly, exactly. Like I was I was actually surprised how, um, what I, I, I would say like total honesty here, like a quarter of my sales are probably plus size, only a quarter. Wow. And it takes me the exact same amount of time to draft the, 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 the business size range and the plus size range. It's the exact same amount of work, maybe even a little bit more. And yeah, so it's like, it's not an even balance, but I do it because I can and I've always offered it. So I don't know how, if maybe a pattern designer has that, has that customer that's really asking, then maybe test it out a bit, but it's, it's, it's a, a risky, it could be a risky venture if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't know. Yes. So that would be my question I was going to ask is why is that? But that would answer the question because if it's risky, a lot of designers may not target that market. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had, I, I wish I knew why this was too. And everybody like the, I know a size sewers out there will say, well, yeah, I absolutely want something for me, but it doesn't always work out that way. I mean, I talked to one of my clients who just started offering plus sizes for her ready to wear line. And she's like, you know what? Women come into my store and they see they see my item and they say, this is super cute, but I'm gonna come back when I'm two sizes smaller and buy it from you. Cause I'm planning Aww. on losing the weight. So maybe that has something to do with it. I'm, I'm curious to know. Yeah. And that's a shame, you know, because I just thinking about walking in to a store where 
a general store where everybody goes to buy clothing and you can't find it. And I know I don't face, when I'm gonna say this, please don't come after us. Please, please, please. I'm saying this in the <laughs> nicest way. But when I was small um, and I actually wore a size, I was in a size range three to four. I went into the store, I was buying um, vacation clothes back then. Uh, I was in a rush and I needed to get some shorts. And I was a size four. Couldn't find any on the rack. Beautiful shorts all over the place. Couldn't find any on the racks. And I was talking to the sales clerk. And you know what she told me? Hmm. She told me that the average size is a 12, she said, and they don't stock anything much um, that smaller. They don't stock, I stock a lot of it. It starts at size 12. But that was, for me, that was disheartening because I didn't think of myself as any kind of size. I just thought I was normal. I was going into a store. So I can't imagine having to do that on a regular basis, no matter what size you are. Yeah. So I just think it's disheartening. It's absolutely true. Like when I see uh, actual garment orders, size 10 and 12 are, or size large is always the biggest number of quantities. And the bigger you go, the fewer garments they cut and the smaller you go, the fewer garments they cut. Wow. Yeah, that's how it's that broken down. In general, in general. Yeah, that's 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 got to change. That's got to change. <laughs> yeah, it does. And it looks like you're on the way to helping people who want to help that change. And we salute you for that. <laughs> but also one more thing, too. It's like um, fitting a, a, a plus size body. I think maybe a lot of plus size stores can be discouraged because when you kind of fit into that range, your body shapes and alter people carry their weight in different areas so the same garment may not fit like an outfit with a pear shaped person so then they got to figure out how to mm. alter that and a lot mm. of people are intimidated by pattern corrections to fit their body yeah so that could be discouraging as well i don't know yeah be interesting to find yeah. out more. that is true i was just looking at a video today of one of my fellow uh youtube sewers who was discussing that that very issue about doing all of the adjustments on her pattern for her body style, you know, and yeah. it's hard. It's really hard. And it's, I, it's just, just got to change. I don't even have the words. You can see I'm kind of tongue tied because it's just, <laughs> it's touching me in some kind of way. Yeah, but I think, I think it's bound to happen though. Yeah. yeah depending. Yeah. Cause not every pattern. Yeah. And uh, the companies that are focusing on the plus size customer, I think they're doing a good job and the customer will then know that this is the fit that they could go yeah. to. And this will be work for my body with very little alterations. True. So it's just building that kind of brand relationship, the same as people have with their ready to wear. Yeah. I think it's the same with any sewing pattern, like any company. I've heard so many people say, oh, well, this company, I know I don't have to make any changes, a full bust adjustment or a sway back or whatever. You know what this company just always fits me. So they tend to go towards that company and buy a lot from that company. So, I mean, plus size or petite, yes, that I'm sure that might am amplify, magnify the problem, but yeah, everybody kind of, because not, not everyone doesn't use, we don't all have the same standard bodies as we were saying, um, but uh, we've had a comment on the side. Um, Kathy has said she needs to try your pattern since she's only five one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I have a free t-shirt if you want to start there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And you say that yeah. you're you say that you're making SBCC patterns in your spare time. You must yeah. have some very special time management skills. <laughs> Can you share yeah. any with that with us? It's pretty intense. I actually haven't had much time to focus on SBCC. I was telling uh, one of my customers the other day, we're having a private conversation. And I'm like, you know, basically I feel like my workload is kind of triage these days. Like I'm always like, what's gonna be the most urgent? Who needs this first? Can I get to this? Like, it's just like, which project to get to first? So I try to like carve out a small bit of time for SBCC. And it's really something that has a lot of growth potential, but I think I have to work on getting help for that. You know, you get to a certain point, like I could crank out patterns all day long but I need to sew them up and I need to write sewing directions and I need to create marketing for mm -hmm. it. And it's so many steps that go along with it. I can make 
patterns all day, like I said. <laughs> I have five. I have five waiting right now to be sewn. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> so but it's um, just I was a, just I was just oh sorry. Oh sorry. No, go ahead. I was just gonna show I, gonna um, show, I, put, the, uh, I put the link. I have a little bit of echoing story in my ear. I put the link for the free tonic tea that you were talking about. I think this is the one. Yeah. The PDF, yeah. The, the PDF is free. So yeah. if people are interested, they could have a look um, for that. Just wanted to make sure they could see it. It's got a lovely little scoop neck. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, you um, were mentioning just now about you probably need help because you have patterns out there that you need to be, have sewn up. Do you uh, reach out? to people, some of the sewing community for testing your patterns that you want to put out there? Um, I have some people that help me proofread, but I don't do a whole lot of testing, to be honest. Oh, you don't? Okay. Like, no, because, um, I mean, I do ready to wear, so, like, I have to I have to make pattern corrections on a daily basis and say, go ahead, okay, cut 20,000. You know, oh, I feel pretty wow. confident. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> What's gonna happen? I mean, I'm not without fault but I try to avoid that. I try to go over everything meticulously and I have my own processes to double check myself. And like my last, my uh, last pattern release, my Ricky jacket, that one was, that one was a doozy. So I did recruit some testers to take a second look at that one for me. Okay. Now I, uh, since you mentioned that, I was going to say, I like the take on your moto jacket, the one that you call moto chic. I have yeah. saw that it has a peplum on it. Um, and I don't believe I've ever seen, one out there like that before. Um, what's nice about your pattern sizing that I, I saw in there that it runs from X small to three X, but um, you really break down those measurements for people to look at like I've not seen on any pattern. Um, and I don't know if she has it there, right there. Yeah, she breaks that down um, so wonderfully that you basically, that's what I was saying. I can look in at one size and just know that that was going to fit me. I'm getting some feedback too, Don. I don't know why that is, but um, but um, ooh, ooh, is everyone hearing is that? Everyone I'm sorry. Hearing that? I'm sorry. Oh, okay, so oh, okay. you hear it, Don? Yeah, it's really loud. Um, can you talk about? Can you talk about? Ugh, why ugh, is that happening? Why is that happening? Me mute. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to know if you could um, talk a little bit talk about, why, little you bit about why you decide to put the to measurements, that measurements that way. Measurements that way. Um, well, I like to choose based on finished garment measurements myself because I'll go into my oh. if I'm going to choose a pattern, I'll go into my own closet and I'll measure something and the sit like a garment that works for me, and kind of compare it in that respect. Okay. It's just okay. Ready, okay. ready to wear. Okay, now that that okay, now, that, that makes that, sense that, to me that, because that to me because that's what a lot of us do. That's what we, a go lot of us do. we go to the finish measurements. Okay, measurements. is there something I'm doing okay, wrong? Something I'm doing wrong I don't think so. Maybe you can try so. refresh. Maybe you can try refresh. Okay. Sorry about this, everyone. Um, the beauty of the live internet. Now I now sound like a robot. Okay. <laughs> can you hear, can you me? hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. I'm not echoing, right? No, nope, you nope, sound great. great. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry about this, about everyone. Uh, oh, here comes Myra back. back. Okay. Okay. And it's and still echoing. Echo. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, best we get Betsy to talk more. Okay. <laughs> Now, Betsy, I do have one another question. I've heard um, it mentioned some people are really concerned about the pricing for independent pattern makers. And in my experience, I've received a better fit from for me from independent pattern makers. And I've started to kind of move over to them a lot more than I have been in the past. Can you sh share some of your thoughts on that topic? Um, well, basically, if I'm factoring in the time spent and into the price of the pattern i'm absolutely getting no recuperation on that at all because it's just me doing so many tasks like my jacket it was like a two-year prog process Ooh. and i mean just because i started and stopped and things changed and it's just like i 
I can't like factor my hourly rate into making something like that and saying I have to sell X amount of patterns to recoup my time. Basically, I'm at a point where the, I don't have anybody else helping me. So it's just me that I can't even count my time into making these. It's just what can the market, what will the market pay basically? Mm -hmm. Otherwise it'd be unbelievably expensive. And I think that's in regards to other uh, smaller independent these as well because it's not like they have a whole team of people in a, in a big office building that each job is broken down and they can just crank out more and more and more it's like that volume that creates the the cheap cost if that makes sense yes it does fully and i already knew the answer to that question but i wanted someone else who might be thinking that very thing that i've heard quite a few times uh, to understand a lot of work for a small company. Oh, a lot of work. Yeah, Thank I just you. try not to think about how much time I spend. <laughs> <laughs> now, with all of that being done, do you still sew for yourself? Because the time is of the essence for you. you. That's your business. Yeah, I really don't get much sewing time for myself. If anything, I'll wear some of my samples, but. I've kind of gone back to buying more ready to wear, but I don't really like shopping because I'm too picky with how things are made and the quality of the fabrics. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> curse. I have this, this conversation with my, my friends as well. They're like, we can't go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it sewers as well. Like you come to expect like a certain level, but it's just not really, I mean, the way, the way the garment industry is going these days, things are going to get even cheaper, unfortunately, but wow. it is what it is. So everybody learn how to sew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it looks like it's going that way too, because there are a lot more new sewers looking mm -hmm. for advice and coming on and, and trying to learn from us who are a little more experienced. So it looks like there is going to be a change in that. Wow. Here's hoping. Um, yeah. We have some questions. Um, I was hoping that maybe some of the people who have asked the questions would like to come on camera and ask them live. If you are interested, just let us know in the comments on the side. Just say, I'd like to come on and ask a question and we'll read it and then we'll ask you to come on. If you ever do want to come on, it always helps to be on Google Chrome and um, yeah, it just makes it run a lot easier and on a computer, if preferably. But before um, we wrap up the questions, it's always exciting to know, do you have any plans for the future? Oh yeah, for sure. I have some really big plans. Like I, I wish I could say just now, but it's involving Garmenta and um, it's uh, it's going to be huge. <laughs> uh, nice. so, yeah, it involves relocating and I'm just trying to find a new home. <laughs> wow. So, well, good luck to you. Thanks. Yeah. But uh, I mean, on the small scale, yeah, I mean, I mean, my big plans are to release a bunch more SBC patterns, maybe the five that are sitting on my sewing table right now. And uh, I'm working on a, a free download for my Garmenta, a, a, a sloper body for designers to get started with. Oh, because nice. If they want to come nice. with me, um, it'll be better for them to have maybe started with something that I've created. So I kind of know where they're coming from instead oh, of reassessing. Awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's get the scale. <laughs> that sounds very exciting. I mean, I, I you're already so busy. Like if you look at your, you know, like you have a, a full business going on as well as, you know, oh, I'm just going to run a pattern company on the side. So yeah, uh, I don't know when you're going to sleep, but I'm happy you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm expecting at least another six months of this kind of hard lifestyle. <laughs> so, oh, wow. <laughs> Poor thing. It's like a the rewards, there. but the rewards will be heavenly. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. So, do you have any we other questions, a, Myra? Um, well, yeah, I have quite a few, but I think we should get to some of the other questions here because we're um, starting to run out of time. We okay. have a, a question here from Patsy. She says, yep. Betsy. Which is your best selling pattern and which in your opinion is the best that might not be selling as well? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, my best selling pattern I think would be the mimosa blouse. It's been a hit. I think it's a, it's a easy enough. So, but it's something different. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe a lot of other companies don't have that kind of like woven raglan style. 
So I would say that's probably the best selling and least selling. I let me think here. I would say maybe my Brooklyn hoodie. I mean, everybody needs a hoodie, so I'm like, I was that one. I'm still kind of. I, it was it was good off the bat, and now everybody's kind of slowing down on that one. You think it, is it? You think it could be because of uh, temperature, climate? Um, not necessarily. I didn't really sell too many over the winter time either. But oh, it's wow. kind of a boxy style, and I think a lot of people don't necessarily want okay. a boxy. It's very nice, though. Thanks. Yes, I thought so too. Yeah, it's very <laughs> nice. Well, you know, everyone has their style, their taste, and things exactly. are just different. Yeah. Well, thank you, Patsy, for that fabulous question. And now, uh, Lorianne is going to come on camera. So oh. we'll invite her on screen and she'll ask some questions. So Lorianne, I've invited you on, just hit yes to sh sharing your camera and mic and then while, fingers crossed you'll pop on. And while she, we are waiting for her to come on, I can ask one of my questions. Betsy, have you ever made a garment that you really didn't care for? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. I have so many losers hanging around that I'm just like, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you time to send them. Hello. Hi there. I guess I should sit up on something. <laughs> Hello, Lorian. Hi, Lorian. Fantastic to meet you. Oh wow, you get this yeah, sewing room. <laughs> oh, <she> looks gorgeous. <laughs> so, Betsy, I'm so happy to to meet you. And hi, Don and Myra. Um, hi. I, I your, nice to meet you too. Your your blogs here. Your um, so here's a question. Have you had any contact with anybody from Project Runway to do your designs? That show Project Runway? I have worked with Project Runway designers, oh. but it, for one of my day jobs. Oh. Like we used to have a licensing deal with Project Runway. And so I, I got to meet many of the winners from that. Oh, that's a no, but nobody's contacted me directly, but who knows? Yet. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And that so, just goes to show what I was saying about her, um, the services that she actually um, provides because some of the things that people are looking like designers who are not good at a certain thing, this is something that Betsy can help them with, like the grading or the digitizing of their patterns and you know, just a wealth of knowledge in that in that way. And this is another example of what I was saying. She has worked with Project Runway winners. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. And another question. Um, do you work with anybody in Europe or is it primarily America? Then ask you to do the designing. I do work with people in Europe. Um, I have a couple of pattern designers in Europe that I'm currently working with right now. Yeah. So, awesome. All over the world. Again, there's that I was asking about that <laughs> miracle time management skill she has. <laughs> I just can't see how she gets all of that in. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, I, I commute on a daily basis, so emails happen during the commute, and <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, every moment is utilized. Wow. Yes, it's good time management. Oh, another great question. Yes. Thanks, Lorian. Yes. Yeah. One more question, if I can. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So your patterns are offered as downloads, um, as PDFs. Um, recently, I've been watching a lot of blogs from Europe, and they talk about net printer. And I, don't, I haven't researched it. I don't know if we have any uh, net printer service where you can print out the whole pattern on, on paper. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Are you aware of that at all? I think I've heard of net printer, but I'm not really familiar with their services. Yes, I've heard a lot of um, some of the YouTubers who are you know out of the country talk about them. And we do have similar service. I know. Um, PatternReview.com was actually offering that. If you buy a digital pattern, they actually have that service where they can uh, sit and have it printed out on large paper for you. And there's other places that we discussed on previous shows, wasn't it, Dawn? There's another place where uh, you can, um, I, the, name, oops, the name kind of 
escapes me right now, but there's another place in the U.S. where you can send them your um, patterns via email to them, and they will um, print them out on the big platter paper and send them to you. I've only done the go into Staples, you know, like the the office supply store myself, and brought it on a USB. And then they say, you know, are you sure you're allowed to print this? And yes, yes, I bought this pattern. And then they print it out large for you. And sometimes they could do that like a day later and they can do it on different, like there's, they have different sizes as well. So I like that because I'm like, you know, oh, I want a pattern. I want it now. You know, I print it, yeah. <laughs> I download it and then I only have to wait like a day at the most to get it. So yes, one yeah. of our, um, I'm sorry, Dawn, one of our subscribers uh -huh. just says that she put the website in pdfplotting.com will do the same thing. Thank you, Crystal. Great question, Laurie. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I've learned something. Thank you. Um, what other question I, I just came to me. S to be sh to understand, are you designing for like H&M or maybe Target or companies like that? Or are you only working with individual people who will then maybe be a middleman and sell to the big companies? Uh, mostly the the small designers who will who will sell to the the bigger companies perhaps if they choose to go that route. But I have I have my background in in mass market like working with big retailers like you know, JC Penney's back in the day and QVC and all of those good places. But I'm I'm more interested in helping the little guys. You know the, the fashion oh. industry has changed so much where it, it's it's harder and harder. Or smaller people to make it big, so you have to have a good strategy going forward. Wow! Yeah, you're an awesome, lady. Yeah, it's been a <laughs> this has been a really, honestly, sincerely, a really fun and very informative interview. Thank you so much for allowing us to do that. I don't know. Thank you guys. <laughs> you have any more questions uh, for us, Lorian? Um, there's not a question, but there's something we have to say while Lorianne's still on camera. Her friend Mary, hi Mary, <laughs> says Lorianne made her striped red top red and white. She's wearing the one that she's wearing. Very nice job. Oh, yes. And you know what? I, I agree completely, Mary. Oh, that's <laughs> a great top. It's a so over <laughs> pattern, um, the Molly top. I made 11 of them because they fit. <laughs> <laughs> you can see some of them hanging on the uh, door in the back there. <laughs> Oh gosh, she sounds like me and my ginger team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's on my laughs> <list. laughs> wow. Well, Lorianne, it was fantastic to meet you. Yes. And thank you very much for asking a question tonight. Yes, questions. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Wow, it was great to have her on, wasn't it? But we yeah, gotta get going because we're gonna run over. <laughs> Okay. So we, I, that's all the questions. The next bit of the evening, tell everyone what it is, Myra. It is time for community news, everyone. I think we need a jingle. Don't you think we need a jingle or something? You know, like. I'll leave sure. that up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing, so that's that's the most you get, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny. So the first okay. one we're going to discuss tonight is MMM. AY18, Me Made May. Yeah. Um, well, have you me, ever done that first? Have you ever done I a Me Made? You no, have? I, you have, you have Betsy? I have not, you know, yes. as, I, as I mentioned, I have too much time to make stuff for yes. myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've not done it. I considered doing it this, um, let me bring up, let me go ahead and bring up um, the spreadsheet here, but, um, can you can you all see that? I see you, and you're looking fine tonight, Myra. But I can't see the uh, spreadsheet. <laughs> oh goodness! <laughs> Let me bring it up. But um, while we talk about it, come on, share so the screen. Me, me, me. Share. Yep. And there we go. Now, lovely. Okay. Yes. Um, I was considering bringing um doing it this year, but um, for those of you who are already doing it and those who want to, all you have to do is head over to Sozo, what uh, What do you know, her, her uh, blog, and we'll have the links for that, both in the information for Crowdcast and the uh, description box for YouTube. Just give us a little bit of time and we'll have that added in there for you. But this is a really great um, challenge um, 
for May because it allows you to actually wear some of your things and, and, and post them and tag people, you know, so everybody can see the things that you wear. And the great thing about it is you can actually set how much you want to do. And I didn't, I wasn't aware of this. Ah. You can you can post one day a month or two days a month, every day of the month. You set your time that you want to do, which is an awesome, which is really, really awesome. I like that. I like that a lot. I thought so, you had to do it every day. I thought no, you no, <laughs> you set your time. <laughs> I found that out um, very quickly because someone said to me, actually, I think it was Miss Crystal who's in our audience. She was telling me, she says, because I didn't think I would have enough outfits yes. because I purge, you know, I do make 95% of my clothes, but I purge a lot and I didn't think I was going to have enough. So she says, no, 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 no. She said, you, you can just post whatever you like, how often you like. And I told her, I said, well, I guess if I read the instructions, I would have known that. So, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's really. It does get busy in May, doesn't it, Myra? <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh my goodness, that's it. So that was, um, that that's something that I think is really interesting. If you're not thinking, if you hadn't thought about doing it, you might want to pop on over to that website and take a look at the rules and go ahead and try it if you like. That's a great suggestion. All right. Thanks, Myra. And you're next welcome. One. Uh, this next one is uh, something um, a little lady, and I can't, I apologize if I don't remember the names. I think it's Anne So Anne. I'll bring it up, but um, I think it was Handmade yeah, here we go. Summer Dress. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes, it's the hashtag Handmade Summer Dress, and it's actually being post. Um, um, started. It's being hosted by uh, and so on. Um, that's our Lisa Kish. And I apologize to this young lady uh, over at, what is the name of her? It's right here on there. Um, the Minimal Approach website and, and so on. And what you do is if you're going to make a summer dress anyway, and a lot of us are making those dresses, you just go ahead and you tag them. Here are the rules right here. And we'll post the link to this um, instruction, the video that talks about the hashtag handmade summer dress. We can't, <clears throat> along, we can't see it, Myra, sorry. Oh, you can't see it? Yeah, I thought, I thought, I thought yeah. Huh, I, well, it says it's, it's sharing. Let me try it again for you. It's hiding with the spreadsheet. <laughs> oh, there, what's? No, what, I was joking, I was joking about the spreadsheet, sorry. <laughs> now, Dawn. I know, you know. I'm throwing you off. <laughs> You know, I'm a little old lady. While you're Don't looking for that, that um, Kathy just said that she joined Me May Made for the first time yesterday. So well done, Kathy. Cool. Yeah, okay, I think there's going to be a lot. Okay, these are the rules. And this is the video here. Um, um, this is a young lady from The Minimal Approach. She, along with and so on, Lisa Kish, are actually hosting this challenge. And again, there are very minimal rules, as you can see here. And we'll post a link to this so that you, you can get over there if you like. If you're already making a dress, why not put the hashtag when you post it and just go ahead and join them? They don't have very many rules here. And I just think it's a really great uh, challenge. And we do have a few of them going on. Uh, in our community. And we just like to share that with you all. Um, there are a lot of them going on. I know uh, so much talent has a new one that's about to uh, start. They just finished up their, um, I think it's the shoes. Their re- I saw um, that. Fresh refashioning shoes. Yeah. shoes. I've never refashioned yeah. shoes. I don't know about you, Betsy. <laughs> I've never even known shoes. <laughs> no. <laughs> so they're ending that up. And I'm sure the pictures will be out of all the fabulous things that they did. But there's a lot of stuff going on in the communities. And we just want to tell you guys about that. So Dawn, I think we have two more. Yep, we'll be very quick. One of them super short. Um, the next one is Athena Kaku's Sewing Your Dream Wardrobe. Um, she was kind enough to send us one of the one of her books and it comes with a workbook as well. And yes. um, yeah, just very, very impressed with it. Sorry, I had to get out of one thing yes. so I could show you some pictures here. Um, I've read through quite a bit of quite a bit of it already. It's not yeah, very she actually nice. sent it to Myra and I, but Myra had already bought it. So yeah. um, just wanted to be transparent that we had been yes. sent a copy. 
Um, yes. But yes, we do uh, quite appreciate that and we quite liked it. So this is, uh, you probably recognize her, Athena Kakuj. And um, it's, a very, it's a very good book um, in that it not only has the book, but it also has um, a workbook as well. It's a PDF download. So it helps you, you know, look at your current wardrobe and decide, you know, and your lifestyle and decide what you will be, what you need, you know, where are the holes and, and help you plan fabrics and things together to make your wardrobe work. So I don't know, what did you think about it, Myra? Well, I tell you, um, it was really good because I had, like I said, I told you, Dawn, I had purchased the book because I had a struggle. But after reading so far into the book so far, what I'm doing is actually one of the things that she says. I purge a lot because I'm just not a person who holds on to things. I'm one of those people that will throw something away and a year later go, what happened to my thing? Doggone it, now I need it and have to go re-get it. But where my struggle was, and she talks about that, and that's what I'm looking for, is when I sew, I need to sew with a plan to create my wardrobe. And that's what I'm looking in her book to get help with. Because a lot of times I'll have pieces in there that don't go with anything. And in some cases, like Betsy said, it's like, what was I thinking? You know, that kind of thing. So. Um, that's what I'm looking for. I like the book. I'm really interested in getting further in it and getting into the workbook. And I thought I'd just quickly show you a couple screens just in case um, you're interested in buying it. So she talks, even there's issues about mindful sewing. There's a section on um, pregnant, if you're pregnant and sewing, how to care for your clothes. Um, and like, whoops, there's the cover. And as I said, it also cut, that it has the workbook as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and it has, she's made quite a few clothes and shown how she groups them together and how they work as well in the back as well. And she made my dress there in the upper left-hand corner. Remember oh. I made that for the day and night challenge. Oh yes, that's great. Right. <laughs> looks beautiful. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's a great book. If you're interested yes. in something like that, check it out. And then, cause we're really, goodness me, getting there. Yeah. Um, and then the very last thing was, um, I don't need to pull up the screen, just that the Pin It Sew It competition that we've been doing on that sewing lab is now closed. So we have had some entries and we will ask the people who um, <clears throat> participated in the challenge if they'd like to come on screen next week. And there will be prizes for the people who come on. And there's even a special code for our viewers. So hopefully yes. people will come and watch. So we wanted to thank our sponsors, Megan, Megan Nielsen Patterns, Iconic Patterns, Blank yes. Slate Patterns, Sew House 7 Sewing Patterns, and Indie Sew, the sewing community. Um, yes. yes, thank you very much. And I can't wait to see yes. the garments next week on the show. <laughs> yeah, me too. And yours, Dawn. I think I finally decided what I'm going to do. I finally decided. <laughs> oh, you're running out of time, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, after that, the week after, we have Angela Wolf. So next week is the Pennant Sew It event. The week after, after Angela Wolf is coming on. We're thrilled to have her on. I can't wait to learn more about her. I think she's much like Betsy in that I don't know how they sleep. I don't know when they yeah. do. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And thank you so much, Bessie, for coming. Again, I cannot reiterate how interesting and how much fun this interview was. Yeah, same here. Same here. This is a lot of fun. And thank you so much for having me on and taking letting me uh, rant about what I do. <laughs> no one ever asks me what I do. So this is fun. Um, well, it might be technical, but it, oh, sorry, Myra. I, I was just going to say it might be technical, but it's fascinating. We really yes. could have talked for a lot longer about all the. Yes. Yeah, if I could pick your brain. I, I know I said that earlier, but oh gosh, the things you know, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe she'll even come back once she gets the uh, pieces together that she didn't can't quite discuss with us right now. She'll come back in the future and talk to us about it. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Like a cool. cool show what people want to talk about. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we like it. Just tonight. Yeah. But anyway, thank you guys so much. You're very welcome. Dawn, do you have anything else for her? No, nope. um, that's, uh, that's it. Um, okay. Thank you again, Betsy. Okay. The very last thing, someone said this evening, they're having problems finding our live show and we want you to find our live show. So yes. if you cannot find our live show, the quickest way to find a link to get here, the direct link 
is to go to our That Sewing Blab Facebook page. And yes. if you scroll down um, into the, the first post will always be for the, the show. So for, for example, here's the one with Betsy. So yeah, That Sewing Blab, just look up That Sewing Blab in the top in the search bar on Facebook and you will find us. So I hope that helps awesome. people out. And uh, if not, just message us, we'll get you here. <laughs> you betcha. Okay, okay well, thank you everyone. And we'll see you all again next week, Tuesday on another episode of That Sewing Blab. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Betsy. Thanks, Betsy. <laughs>